Good morning. Good morning. It's time to begin our morning worship. It is now time to begin our morning worship. We'll sing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind and I stay. Uh, special thanks 
Brother Wilburn and the rest of the leadership would like to thank Cliffview for their wonderful support. The outreach was a great success. Thanks for your generosity. I think they still may be um, um, taking in uh, uh, items, coats, uh, blankets, what, whatever can be used by those in need. Uh, remember that the uh, social distancing uh, is being practiced uh, during all services and, um, and masks will be worn. Uh, brothers, um, if you're going to be attending services and we ask that you do, uh, please remember to try to arrive before 930 so we can um, make and have assignments for uh, serving in the Lord's worship service. All right, so please try to get here around 9.30. Um, the, more, the more hands we have, the easier the work is. Brother Ozzie Lewis has a new address. He is living with family at 624 Missionary Ridge, Minnesota, Texas, 75115. And also, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we know that it, it is the season. In many ways, uh, things are looking better and brighter. For us, so uh, things are looking up. Uh, before a lot of people, uh, as with our warm hearts, evangelistic outreach, there are a lot of people out there in need. Amen. Um, it's a shame to pile up presents under a tree and in a closet and have all this stuff when there are so many people that are still in need. Uh, but sometimes we don't always know when someone has a need. So if you know of someone, or you think there's a possibility that someone may have a need, even if you can't feel it, feel that need, please find out. Um, and let somebody know here, uh, one of the brothers or the elders, um, or anybody. Uh, you know, we have so many brothers and sisters that give so much out of their hearts and their love. And so we're giving church, but we need to know sometimes who really needs it to really make a difference in some people's life. That's where evangelism and God's work begins. So uh, if you know someone, say something. Uh, those are all the announcements that I have. Uh, I'll be back for you to uh, just kind of reiterate a few announcements and to see if we have any visitors at that time. Thank you. God been good to you seeing that. God has blessed us to see another view today. Uh, we pray that you uh, thank God with all your heart and all your mind. We pray that God will has it blessed to see hopefully another new year. We pray for those uh, you know have, uh, those who've gone on and uh, we pray that we'll be in good standing when the Lord calls us. Uh, also uh, want to put uh, bring to your members that if you have your phone on, can you put it on vibrate, please? So we. We don't have any distractions because uh, remember, you know, the focus is on the Lord. That's and also, um, if you uh, phone numbers have changed, uh, anything has changed in your uh, uh, at home or anything, can you fill out one of the green cards uh, for the pets so we can keep things updated? Uh, if we do want to call you, uh, we don't want you to get mad because we haven't called you because you changed the number and you let nobody know. So uh, please do that. Uh, anything else, let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for allowing us here today. We thank you for all your many blessings. We pray for the day's service will be pleasing in our sight. We pray for the day, uh, the ones that are coming, that they will make it safely in town. We pray also pray for the message that it will be uh, according to your word. We pray that we're going to add or subtract from it. We pray that uh, we would love one another as you command us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Once again, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. God's been good. And at this time, if anyone has anything they'd like to say to the church or like to put the Lord on in baptism, just stand where you're at and the brothers will be able to assist you shortly. There's not a friend like the Lord lives, and we're singing no
morning, church. I'm just asking the church to pray for my wife and our son, Caleb, uh, on this uh, last week. Uh, one of the students that was in his classroom had tested positive, so right now they're at home in quarantine. So that's why my wife and the rest of my kids are not here this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm just okay. I asked them to pray us for my daughter. She's still under the weather with bronchitis. She's doing better when she got out of the way. And also, I was sending it for myself. And please continue your prayer to keep me in my family with that. Amen. To the church, I've said, I repent. I ask God to forgive me and I ask you all to pray for me. Amen. Good morning. I'm Sister One Eight Nine. I want to ask prayers for the Naughty family, for the son who, who is home. We were so happy to have him home, but he's still going through a lot. We need you to keep him in your prayers and his sister. And I also want to ask prayers for uh, Sister Cash, who is at home now. She's doing some battle, but still in some pain. And this, uh, I went to see uh, Sister Below. I did happen to get a chance to see her. Take her big basket of goodies and she was happy. She seemed like she was doing okay. She was in a good spirit as usual and was just happy to see me and everything. So just keep her in your prayers and I just have to God just blessed me to make a phone call and there was a lady there that answered the phone and she asked me that I want to talk with her and I said, Oh yes. And so I said, I'll be by or something. So I just went to the door and they had the door open and such a good load was sitting at the table. So I just waved at her and everything, and she waved back. And she's, she just had a good spirit to be her age, so keep her in your prayers. Amen. Good morning, church. This is Carmen Jones, and I'd like to ask continued prayers for Brother Cliff Robinson and his wife, Sandra. Um, the surgery went well, and I just want y'all to pray for them. They are on that road to recovery. And I also would like the church to would thank the church for praying for my son, Darren. He did uh, pass his test, and he is a certified teacher in the faith. Once again, I'm asking for your prayers as I travel the road to Illinois to visit Miami for Christmas. And God's grace for me. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. I'm Sister Camille, your boy, and I wanted to thank the church so much for praying for my brother-in-law and my sister that was battling COVID. Uh, my sister was discharged this past Friday from the hospital. She has a little road to go, a little recovery, but I'm so grateful to God. I just wanted to thank the church for the prayers. Also, I'm just grateful for uh, the parents committee for sending me a birthday card to the Lord say the same. It's coming Wednesday. I get to celebrate another birthday. Amen. I'm just grateful to God for for bringing us through the things that we've gone through this year and continue to pray for me and my family. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sherry Smith. I want to thank you all for praying for me. The last couple of Sundays I wasn't able to be here, but I am improved and I thank God for that. Thank you all for your prayers and your phone calls. And at this time I would also like uh, prayers from my oldest sister. She has Alzheimer's and she's in Mansfield and uh, in a facility, assisted living facility, and they uh, put her in hospice. So please pray for her. Amen. Good morning, Emma Lord. Uh, I want prayer for uh, Raymond Reese, his sister died on Friday, his oldest sister, and prayer for my family and myself. Thank you. Amen. Hi, this is Johnny Ford, and I just want to thank everybody for praying for me and calling me and checking on me and seeing that I'm doing all right. And I am better. What they said was wrong is when I went to the hospital, like I had a feel. And I went to the heart doctor over there, and everything was back in with them. So, so you all just continue to pray for me and my family. And I have a lot of friends that's going through the house bus council. So, pray for them and my family. Thank you. Amen. Good morning to the viewers. Noel Wilson, Senior. And I just want to thank the church for all the phone calls and the prayer for my wife, and a special prayer for, for Brother Wilbur and, and the prayer he sent up for my wife. And also a the prayer for my daughter. She'll be going in the hospital on the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, to have surgery. And also I'm praying for my granddaughter, Camille. She had surgery yesterday, 
and keep all of us in the prayer and I hope they will recover from that surgery. Thank you. I want to thank the church for uh, praying for me on last week when I wasn't feeling real well. I was okay, I just had got wet. <clears throat> and I didn't want to come to church if I had a little sniffle or something. We're trying to follow the CDC rules. If you don't feel well, don't come. But anyway, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your calls. Also, I want to let you know the prayers uh, of the rights to avail for my sister. She had her last radiation. And we pray now that everything will just kind of transition the way it's supposed to go. And I also want to thank the sister who always thinks about me when she's making the sweets. And I'm going to call out her name. Because other folks will be following me. But thank her for making out the sweets. Thank you, sister. Now. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, do, uh, this sure. sister now will do that, huh? Good morning, church. Hey. I'm Brother Glenn Barnsley. I'd like to play, pray for George Merrillac Jr. family. Uh, his whole family is suffering from uh, COVID. Uh, his wife, a uh, couple of the kids, a couple of cousins, and he's currently battling uh, COVID at UT uh, Southwestern. So keep that family in your prayers. Good morning. I want to do as I was told. Uh, again, pray for my Aunt Lisa, who's recovering from surgery. And then also, as Sister Jones has stated, for Brother Cliff Robinson, he set up yesterday, and he's on the road to recovery as well. So please keep those individuals in your prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are in heaven. We thank you, dear Lord, for this day and that was not promised, but you made it possible for us to come together this morning to bring our trials and tribulation to you. We thank you for being that God who is standing and waiting for us to deliver to you because we know you are a God who sit high and look low, and we thank you. We lift this prayer up to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. First of all, this one has forgiveness for our sin. If it was in word, thought, or deed. We had so many members, members this morning has come rejoicing because you answered their prayers. You know who they were, three or four of them. Just want to give you thanks. And that's what it's all about. You yes, can't sir. forget. Yes, sir. Job, the, the, the blessing that we receive from you. We just want to come back and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And this many also has made it known that they're uh, home because of the virus, uh, because, well, because of quarantine. Uh, quarantine and now, and so we just ask that you keep them safe, keep them safe, the Lord. And, that they continue to do the right thing because we know that at the end of the day that you still a good God. Yeah. Not because you couldn't, it's just because you didn't want to at that time. Yeah. We're gonna trust you, we're gonna continue to depend on you yeah. yes, because we know that you're a God who make no mistake. Yeah. Your Lord, that several has made it known that they're traveling for the for the uh, for the week. Uh, and next week, yes, that you put that shield of protection around them. Yes, sir. On those dangerous highways and byways, and keep them safe, dear Lord. Keep them safe, and that they make it there safely and return back home without any problem or setback. Yeah. We thank you, dear Lord. Also, we know there are several that will be going into surgery this week. Go with them. Go with them, dear Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Direct those physicians, those uh, uh, nurses and doctors' hands and mine, and that they do the right thing. Yes, sir. What is needed. And that they will have a speedy recovery, as Brother Cliff Robson is, is, is on his way back to the building sometime soon. 
bless him also. And Sandra and the family, keep him, give him the strength that is needed. Give each of us that strength that, that is needed. Yes, sir. Direct our steps, dear Lord. Yes, sir. Give us the strength. Build us back up where we're weak. Yes. And where we may be torn down, yes. we know that you are God who can do it. Yes. There's many, dear Lord, also that wanted to be in the house today, but not able to come because of other reasons, other than being quarantined. Uh, but we know that you know who they are, and we know that you will touch them in a very special way. And bless them, and lift them up, and bring them back to us. We pray that each of us today would be very open-minded and be able to receive your word that will help us get through this day. The word that we can share with others. We can share with others and rejoice in those words. We need you, Father. We thank you so much for being there, God. Protect us, Lord. Keep us safe. Keep us safe, dear Lord. We come offering this prayer up to you. Yes, sir. In Jesus the Christ's name. Let us all say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I've been running every since I made a start. Oh, 
before you for your scripture reading, and it will come from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 25. That's Matthew 1, verses 18 and 25. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. And his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bury a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name. Jesus. Yes. Scripture reading from the from Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 35. Would you please stand for the song and the prayer? Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, how I love
I'm just thankful to be here today. Yeah. And I want to thank Brother Gillard who called me this week, if he does a lot. He asked me about Caleb and Kate. And my response was, he knew it was touching and heartbreaking for me. He said, Brother Wilbur, let's pray. And I'm talking, <coughs> I'm talking about he set up a prayer that touched me. All of us are going through something. <laughs> if you're not going through something, just wait. And we do know that we have somebody that's able to help us. I want to thank Brother Shannon for those songs of Zion. Amen. Along with Brother Michael Roy. Amen. It takes all of us collectively yes, sir. to be in the fellowship of saints. Yes. To worship God in the spirit of holiness yes. on this day. Yes. I want to say, I want to ask a special prayer for Sister Beverly Thompson. She didn't tell me to do that, but I, I want to do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning realizing, God, that we are all sinners. Yes, Lord. Yes. Saved by your grace. Yes, sir. Protected by your mercy. Yes. We come before you, O oh God, just thanking you that you are the great I am that I am. Yes. We come before you, O oh God, and we realize, God, our uh, on cleanliness and we realize God that we are all sinners and and God we realize God that it was nothing but your blood. Yes, sir. The yes. blood of Jesus yes. that cleansed yes. us from all of our sins. Yes. God we're coming for you first of all we want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for being a prayer answering God. Thank you. We pray for those hearts that are heavy this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loss of loved ones and yes. during this time yes. God we yes. ask that you would touch right now, God, with the finger of mercy and compassion. We pray for those families that are going through situations where they, they've been diagnosed with deadly diseases, and, 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 and God, they're, they're going through the trial. God, let them know that you are still able, and that you are more powerful than cancer, yes, sir. you're more powerful than any disease, yes, sir. because God, you got healing in your wind. Yes. We pray for America right now, God, oh, America oh, needs oh. you now more than ever before. Yes, God, we ask, Lord, that America will realize that you are the great I am. Yes, realize, God, we need you now more than we've ever needed you in times past. Yes, Lord, we come before you at this time in collective worship. We realize one thing, God, that we can depend on you. All we got to do is look back at your track record, God. When we were going through, you were always there. You were the one that gave us the, the strength and the hope to keep on hoping along. Lord, we pray for every family that is under the sound of my weak prayer voice. God, we pray you would touch us with an overtouching blessing. Yes, sir. Bless us, God. Just bless us, God. Help us, God, and to realize yes. that without you, we cannot do anything. Yes. Yes. Lord, we come before you asking, God, that you would be with us in our worship service this morning. Yes, sir. God, realize it's not about us, <laughs> but it's all about you. All about yes. God, we pray that you will help us to turn over the concerns of this world yes. and have our mind toward all you, right. God. All right. We ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to come and just take over this wisdom service this morning. We pray for the man of God that will come. God, we pray you will bless him with preaching Holy Ghost field power. Yes, sir. Lord, may we realize that you are God, and God, you will have your way. We ask God you take over and sign this wisdom service with your mighty hand. Yes, sir. Bless those families, God, that, that are praying in need of miracles. And God, we believe in a miracle working God. Yes, all right. Yes. 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 Yes.
look down and bless us and watch over us. We ask this prayer yes. in the mighty, yes. powerful yes. name of Jesus. Yes. What is that the name of Jesus? Yeah. Every knee every. shall bow yes, yeah. and every yeah. tongue shall confess. Yeah. We ask this prayer in his name because yes, he is able. Yes, He's more than able. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the same Jesus that called Lazarus out of a grave and said, Lazarus, come forth, oh, no. and it came forth. Mm -hmm. It's the same Jesus that was able to walk on the water. Yes, sir. It's the same yes, sir. Jesus yes, sir. that gave sight to the yeah. 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 It's the same yeah. Jesus that died to establish his church. Yeah. It's the same Jesus that yeah. died. Yeah. Yes, you bless us in his name. We do pray. Let the dean of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship we want to call. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. I said it to our God. Every praise, come on, come on, praise, praise. We want to call and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. I said it to our God. Every prayer is to me. Every prayer. Come on, it's to our God. Every word of every word of worship. We want to call and pray and pray and pray and pray. Come on, it's to our God. One more time, sing and pray. getting used to this and I don't have my voice it's kind of going out but uh let's see one more and then we'll bring Minister Rose up uh let's see one more let us I remember we stand to our feet sometimes right let's stand to our feet all right stand to your feet watch ye therefore you know not the day the day Jesus 
is his name. Thank the Lord for his son. Yes, sir. Jesus. Yes, sir. The Christ. The Messiah. This morning, we are truly blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those who are going through life struggles. But we have help. And his name is Jesus. Amen. The world have it on December 25th. Yes, sir. Is the birth of Christ. But we celebrate Christ every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every day is his birthday. Yes. Because how good he continued to be to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daily. While we was asleep last night wow. in the midst of death, wow. not knowing what was going on around us, yeah. but it was Jesus yeah. protected us yes, sir. while we lay in our beds. Yes, sir. And this morning, we're just so humble to be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. I want to give all honor and glory to oh, God to oh, oh. realize that it's nothing that I have done, yeah. but it's what He has done. Amen. He died for a sinner like me, <laughs> cleansed me with His precious blood. Yeah. To redeem me out of the pits of death. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But to sit me upon the truth of the faith. Yes, sir. Which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This morning we're realizing that December the 25th that people are going to be celebrating all across the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saying that Christ is birthed. But this morning, we're just going to see what the Bible says about Jesus and his birth. And this morning, we're over here in Matthew chapter 1, in verse number 18. And I want to thank those brothers who proceeded before me with those response reading, <coughs> prayers, and the wonderful spiritual hymns and songs. In Matthew chapter 1, and verse number 18, it gives the background concerning the birth of Jesus. But before we get there, let's do some history checks first. What are some history checks? I will give them to you soon. But let's first start out in Isaiah chapter 9, in verse number 6. The prophet Isaiah here is going to let us know that this was 700 years before the birth of Christ. That a son would be born. And he will take on the entire sins of the world and to give all men an opportunity at eternal life those who are willing to obey him in Isaiah chapter 9 in verse number 6 I have my reader and I want us to follow along this is the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 9 in verse number 6 what the Bible said for unto, us, for unto us a child is born. Yes. Unto us a son is given. Uh huh. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Yes. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, uh -huh. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yes. Of the increase of his of his government and peace, there will be no end. Uh huh. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever. 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Well, here it is. The prophet Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the Christ was even born mm -hmm. that there will be a son, and that son is Jesus, the son of the living God. Yes, and let's go back to our text in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 18 and see what the Bible teaches. And I want my reader to stop at verse number 19 and give some background. In Matthew chapter 1, in verse number 18, what does the Bible say? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. So here it is. This is the father of Joseph and the virgin Mary. Now, according to the old law, the word betrothal is an act of engagement for a marriage during the Bible times. And it means it's a binding marriage and it's called a spousal. And the Bible gives us an example in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 22 in verse number 23 and 24. My reader get a chance to get paid to read that. See, we're just going to give some background here concerning the truth of Jesus. And what does the Bible say concerning the marriage between Joseph and Mary in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 23 to 24. What does the Bible say? If a young woman uh -huh. who is a virgin be thrown to a husband, uh -huh. and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, uh -huh. then you shall bring them both out of the gate of the city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. Mm -hmm. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife. Uh -huh. So you shall put away the evil from among you. So here it is, that up under the old law, in the Bible time, even though that this marriage was bounding and Mary here she is pregnant but realizing that that Joseph wanted to put her away understand that writ up under the law even though that they are they are married bounding but yet she's pregnant so in other words Joseph wanted to put her away according to the law and so we, re we have to realize that even though he was uh, up under the law and he was, the Bible says that he was faithful to the law, but yet his wife is pregnant. Mm -hmm. But Mary is pregnant due to the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh. Not that he touched Mary because Mary was a virgin. Right. This was a virgin birth, but yet it was a marriage. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mary was not touched by Joseph. But she was touched by the Holy Spirit. Given that the Holy Spirit had what? Given her this son. And that son would be Jesus. In verse number 20, what does the Bible say? But while he thought about these things, uh -huh. behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, uh -huh. saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, uh -huh. for that which is con conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And she will bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So here it is. When you look at Joseph, the son of David, and I want you to look at this spiritual standpoint concerning Christ in the church. Christ married to the church. Yes, sir. Presented as a bridegroom, as a chaste virgin. Mm -hmm. Here it is, Joseph has his wife Mary as his wife and as a virgin. How does that relate to the church? And go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 2. This is what the Bible teaches. For I am jealous for you with je godly jealousy. Uh -huh. For I betrothed you to a one husband. Yeah. That I may receive you as a chaste virgin to Christ. As, as one husband. 
Joseph as the husband and Mary as the what? As the one wife. How Christ in the church, how Christ died for his bride, which is the church of Christ. Thank God for the church of Christ. Joseph married to Mary as a chaste virgin and she conceived Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And we recognize that Jesus' birth had come through Mary, but the Holy Spirit was given unto Mary as Jesus, as the Son, but to fulfill the promises of his kingdom. Yes, sir. How do we know this? And let's go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse number 11 and verse number 16. And let's see what the Bible teaches. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse number 11 through 16, what does the Bible say? Since the, since the time that I commanded judges yes. to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies, uh -huh. also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you. Uh -huh. Who will come from your body? Yes. And I will establish his kingdom. So who will that seed come from? The seed of Jesus, the seed of Abraham, through David, through the lineage of David. Uh -huh. And going to establish his kingdom, not upon David's throne, but upon the throne of Jesus. Uh -huh. Because he's going to establish his kingdom that will what? Never be destroyed. Amen. Go ahead. He shall build a house for my name. He shall build a house. What we're talking about. Are we talking about a house of brick and mortar? No, we're talking about a spiritual house. Yes, sir. Talking about God's people as a spiritual house, mm -hmm. not a physical house. Go ahead. And I will establish a throne of his kingdom forever. He's going to establish a throne upon what? His kingdom forever. But let's, let's give some education here. When they talk about the word kingdom, they're actually talking about the church of Christ. Because when you're talking about the kingdom, you're talking about the church of Christ. They're both interchangeably, but they mean the same. Yes, Go right ahead. I will be his father. Yes. And he shall be my son. Uh-huh. If he commits iniquity, yes. I will chasten him with the rod of men. Uh-huh. And with the blows of the sons of men. Yes. But my mercy shall not depart from him. So in other words, that his mercy shall not depart from them. For in other words, the mercy shall not depart from his people. Man. Just like the mercy has not departed from us today. Man. Thank God for his mercy. Man. It is great. Man. Go ahead. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul. Yes. Whom I removed from before you. Yes. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So your throne shall be established forever. In other words, your kingdom, meaning the church of Christ, will be established forever. The kingdom is going to be established forever. So in other words, the kingdom will never be destroyed. Yes, sir. Thank God I'm a member of the Church of Christ. All right. A kingdom that will never be destroyed. Thank God for his kingdom. Yes, sir. And going back to the text, and we recognize that Jesus' birth came to fulfill all God's promises, including his kingdom. And how do we know during this time that Jesus' birth will come through the lineage of David. Well, let's see what the Bible teaches in John chapter 7 in verse number 42. And I hope we'll fall along with the word of God to be able to help us understand this world that they celebrate December 25th. But we have reason to celebrate today because Jesus is on the throne. Go right ahead. What does the Bible say in John 7, 42? Has, the, has not the scripture said that Christ comes, comes from the seed of David? Christ would come from the seed of David. Notice that that seed is in what? Singular form. That's it. That seed is only one son, meaning right. Jesus Christ. Not many seeds, but seed, meaning it's in singular form. Yes, sir. It's no other seed but Jesus. Oh. Go right ahead. And from the town of Bethlehem, uh -huh. where David was. Yes. So there was a division among the people because of him. Uh -huh. Now some of them wanted to take him, uh -huh. but no one laid hands on him. So in other words, they, they wanted to lay hands on him. But recognize that this was not the time.
for Jesus to be taken up. Wow. It wasn't time yet. God has set an appointed time for the sons to take on the iniquities of mankind. Yes, sir. This was not the time. We recognize that also that Jesus, in which in verse, go back to Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 22. Let's see what the Bible teaches. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 22, what does the Bible say? So all this was done that yes. it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through uh -huh. the prophet, saying, yes. Behold, the virgin shall be with the child yes. and bear a son, yes. and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So in other words, his name also can be called Emmanuel. Yes, sir. Meaning that God is what? Is with us. So during all of our times of struggle, all of our times when we're going through surgery, coming in out of surgery, having COVID, having all these recoveries, remember the name Emmanuel. That means God is with us. All right. He's with us, people. Yes, Every day, yes. God is with us. All right. When we're going through, when we're in a depressed state, remember that Emmanuel, God is with us. Thank God that he stays with us. And we also recognize that during this time of Jesus, in Matthew chapter 2, read it, and go to verse number 1 and stop at verse number 2, and let us understand that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that it was the old king, King Herod, who was after the only begotten son. And see what the Bible teaches. Go right ahead. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of yeah. Judea, uh -huh. in the days of Herod the king, yeah. behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Yeah. For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Stop right there. And notice, here it is. Yeah. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And King Herod, and let's give some background here. King Herod, he was the most prominent family member and ruler. And he was called Herod the Great. And we also recognize that this man, he was appointed king of the Jews in around 40 B.C. And he ruled until his death in 4 B.C. And this king here, he was a ruthless man. In other words, he was what you call a serial killer within his own family. And why would you say that about the king, Brother Rose? Well, the Bible teaches that he, not only he murdered his own wife, he murdered his three sons, he murdered his mother-in-law, he murdered his brother-in-law, and he murdered his own uncle. Look at this man, was given power, but yet he is a murderer, a serial killer. And it just goes to show you how when you have prominence, when you are in a position of authority, see how that can cause you to go crazy. <laughs> you have to be careful. See, this causes people to go crazy when they have so much power and authority, meaning that they can do what they want to do, that they don't have to answer to no man. And look at King Harak. And his man, a murderer, a serial killer within his own family. And he's after Jesus. And notice how the Bible says that the Magi, who were the Magi? These were men who was working up under the king. These were men who, they studied astrology. In other words, they studied the light. In other words, the Jews looked at the light as the one God whom they served. In this star, here, they followed the star because they believed that star was the one God that they must follow. And, but what they failed to realize, that that star was starring upon the star, which is the Son of God. He's the bright and morning shining star. So the star had to pay respect to the star, which is Jesus Christ. And let's see what the Bible teaches over here in verse number three, what the Bible said. When Herod the king heard this, yes. he was troubled, yes. and all Jerusalem with him. Uh -huh. And when he had gathered all the chief priests uh -huh. and scribes of the people together, yes. he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Uh -huh. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, yes. for this it is written by the prophet. Uh -huh. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, 
are not least the rulers of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of all you shall become a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So who, wow. is, the, who is the shepherd? It's Jesus. He's the good shepherd. Yes, sir. He comes to rule over his people, uh -huh. the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And at this time, who were God's chosen people? It was the children of Israel. Uh -huh. was God's chosen people. Uh -huh. And they would be shepherded by the good shepherd. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we're moving right along. In verse number seven, what does the Bible say? Then Herod, when he heard, when he had secretly called the wise men, uh -huh. determined from that from then what time the star appeared. Yes. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back. Word to me, that I may come and worship him also. Look at Satan. Look at Satan. Yeah. He's here to kill the firstborn, yeah. the son of the living God. And he's lying, said, where is he? So I can come and worship him. See, when you have authority and when you empower, see, Satan know how to use you because your, your mindset is that, listen, I got control of everything. People who are working under me, I can get them to do anything. And that's why you got to be careful. On December 25th, we're not celebrating no birth of Jesus. No way. But we celebrate because what Jesus continues to do for us each and every day. But the world has put it as a holy day. No, we don't look at it as a holy day. We look at it as just another day that Jesus has blessed us to be able to wake up that day. And see, a day was not promised to us. Because man has established it as a holy day. Uh -huh. No, the holy day is the day because it's the first day of the week. Yeah. Christ was raised from the grave. Yes, we celebrate him uh -huh. on the first day of the week. Yes, sir. As the church of Christ do. Amen. Amen. And we Amen. just thank God that we celebrate his son. Each and every day. Yes, sir. And go right ahead in verse number nine. What the Bible said. When they heard the king, yes. they departed. Uh -huh. And behold, the star which had seen in the east uh -huh. went before them. Yes. Till they came and stood over where the young child was. Uh -huh. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Yes. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Yes. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Now I want us to be very mindful. Now let's look at these gifts that they wow. present. Yeah. See, a lot of times, and when it's, uh, we're five days out now before Christmas, and people are going to be opening up gifts. Uh -huh. Yes, and when the gifts that they're going to be open, Brother Will Burns, some of them may be rejoicing, and some of them may be upset okay. because they didn't get what they asked for. But I'm going to tell you, uh, the gifts that somebody gives you, uh, you ought to be thanking them because they didn't have to do it. But this gift that these wise men had brought before the sun, these gifts, precious gifts, these gifts represent showing honor unto the sun and showing that how precious he is. And these gifts that they brought him. And let's see what the Bible teaches uh, concerning these uh, precious, precious gifts. And let's see. And what is the first gift that they brought? Gold. Gold. Now, let's give some background here. This, this gold is, is beautiful, it's malleable, and it's very uh, it's expensive. And it was used extensively in the tabernacles, in the temples for furnishings. And also we recognize that these were precious metals. And you have Ophar and Euphaz, and you have all of these precious metals and minerals uh, concerning gold. And can you give me an example? Yes. And go to Genesis chapter 2. And let's give some background here. In Genesis chapter 2, in verse number 10. And this is concerning Adam and Eve once they was outside in the garden. And it's going to show these precious rivers. And also it's going to show how gold and how expensive and how, how beautiful gold is. Because if you have never uh, experienced or seen uh, real gold is very lavish, very shiny, and it's pure. And what does the Bible say in Genesis 
chapter 2 and verse number 10. What the Bible said. Now a river went out to Eden to uh -huh. water the garden. Yes. And from there it parted and became four river heads. Yes. The name of the first is Pishon. Uh -huh. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah. Yes. Where there is gold. Where there is gold. See how precious the setting is? You have the Pishon River. And then on the side of the Pishon River, you have a place where gold is. And that's just going to show you that not only how pretty gold is, but notice how in the garden you had the flow of what? Of the water. The yes. river. So God had set Adam and Eve up in a place of what? Serenity. A place of beauty. They was set up where God, they didn't need anything. Yes, sir. But they just go to show you how man can be, cannot be satisfied. You can give him everything, but he's still yet not satisfied. God has set Adam and Eve up in the garden. They didn't need anything. Rivers and the precious gold on the outside of the Pishon River. But yet and still, they're not satisfied. And what is the next? Uh, go back to go back to the gifts. And we gave it a background here on gold. What about frankincense? And let's see what the Bible says concerning frankincense. And the Bible says they brought gold and frankincense. And now let's give frankincense is an Greek is an ingredient from the sap of trees. It's used in making the perfume, right? For the most holy place in the tabernacle. Well, how do we know this? And go to Exodus chapter 30 and verse number 34. And notice how these gifts that they have brought the sun, how the frankincense is a perfume. So in other words, it's a perfume that it smells good. It's a fragrance. And I'm pretty sure you brothers, uh, for this upcoming so-called Christmas, some of you brothers been trying to scramble to find your wife that perfume that she always wear. Because you want her to smell good. And you like smelling that perfume, brothers. Don't look at me like you don't. Your wife put on some nice perfume, you, you all over. <laughs> In the same way for the wives. You, you get your husband that perfume you like to smell on him, you're going to be all over it. Some of you, I was all over your husband this morning after you put on that perfume, that cologne, brother. You put on that nice cologne. It was the Bible said. In Exodus chapter 30 and 34, what the Bible said concerning frankincense? And the Lord said to Moses, uh -huh. Take sweet spices, yes. spat, and onika, uh -huh. and yes. pure frankincense, uh -huh. with these sweet spices, yes. there should be equal amounts of each. Uh -huh. You shall make of these incense uh -huh. a compound according to the art of perfumer, uh -huh. salted, pure, and holy. So in other words, that this perfume was considered holy because it was inside the temple. And once inside the temple, it smelled good, but it also represents holiness because it was inside of the temple. All right? And let's see. And we got the gold, we got the frankincense, and then let's go to the myrrh. What is the myrrh? You? Well, we know that the myrrh is also, it's applied. And it's applied to what would we, what would we say that as a burial, as in Jesus, after his death, they had myrrh. There. And how do we know that myrrh was there? And let's go and see what the Bible teaches. Over here, let's go to John chapter 19, verse 39 and 40. And let's see what the Bible says concerning myrrh. And Nicodemus, uh -huh. who at first came to Jesus by night, yes. also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, uh -huh. about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bowed in strips of linen with spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. So in other words, this was myrrh was a, uh, it was a custom to a burial, to a death. In other words, that myrrh, in other words, were a body. It would not uh, stench. But they didn't need that for Jesus because on the third day that he would raise early Sunday morning from the grave. And not only that, he would fold up the clothes in a neat way to let them know that yes, I'm no longer in the grave. Don't hide from me there. I'm out from the grave. Thank God that he's out from the grave early Sunday morning. Yes, the, the myrrh was used. As an example, but it wasn't needed for Jesus because we know that he would rise from the grave early Sunday morning. Yes, and we're moving right along. Here, I gave you concerning those gifts, the gold, the fragrances, the myrrh. And then the Bible says in verse number 12, I'll read that. And the Bible says, read from the NIV, and having been warned 
uh, in a dream not to go back to Iraq. And they returned to their country by another route. All right. So here it is. Yeah. And Mary and Jesus, they, they escaped unto Egypt. And once they escaped unto Egypt, and the Bible says, and go to Matthew chapter 2. Let's go down to verse number 16. And what does the Bible say? In Matthew chapter 2, in verse number 16, what does the Bible say? Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, uh -huh. was exceedingly angry. Yes. And he sent forth and put to death all male children who were in Bethlehem and in all his districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Yes. Then, he, then what was filled was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, yes. refusing to be comforted, because there are no more. Go ahead, keep reading. Now when Herod was dead, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who saw the young child's life are dead. So here it is, King Arai, he's, he's, he's setting a decree, in other words, for all the male boys to be put to death. Yeah. Look at this king. Look how ruthless he is. Yeah. Not only have he killed his immediate family, but now he's out to kill all the male boys. And you're talking about a man who is deranged as a king. Sure you're right. He's going on a killing spree. Yes, sir. Man with power and authority have lost his mind. <laughs> and go to verse number 21 and see what the Bible said. Then he arose, yes. took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Yes. But when he heard the Archelaus, was reigning over Judea instead yeah. of his father Herod. Yeah. He was afraid to go there. Uh -huh. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. Uh -huh. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, yeah. that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So here it is. Now who is Achilles? Achilles, he was the son of King Herod, and he was a principal successor of Herod the Great as Tatriarch, along with his brothers. Antipodes and Philip. Mm -hmm. And he was also, he was in, he interfered in the high high priesthood and he married against the Jewish law. And not only he opposed the Samaritan and Jews, but he brutally, he brutally have treated them with contempt. But thank God that his rule ended in around AD 6, when the Roman government banished him from God. And where he later died. Yes, sir. And this goes to show you, you in power, God is going to take care of you. Yes. You don't have to try to say, God, take this person out. God is going to take care of you. Yes. And look at this man here. God had taken him out because he recognized that he, the, he had the Samaritan and Jews. And he had them bound because his brutal act toward the Samaritan. In the Jews. And look at here. And we recognize that also that Jesus, and when they withdrew from the district of Galilee, they went and lived in a town called Nazareth. In the town of Nazareth. And so it was fulfilled that that was said that through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. So in other words, right. what does the word Nazarene? Nazarene means that it a person that is what? Despised. Remember that Jesus, he was a prophet, was without honor. From coming from his own people. Yeah. The prophet Jesus was without honor. So in other words, they despised the son. They said, nothing can good come out of Nazareth. Nothing. But they failed to realize Jesus had come out of Nazareth. Thank God for Jesus, the son of the living God. Yes, and we moving right along here. And we recognize that yes, in Jesus he came through, and we recognize that. Let's look at some biblical facts concerning this so-called the world said holy day. And we recognize that this, that the birth of Jesus, they connected to this world pagan rituals. And we know that the pagan rituals in the early church or in early Christianity, it signified different parts of Jesus' life. That was more important than Christmas, than the world has December 25th. Yes, sir. And we also recognize the meaning of 
the word nativity. The word nativity, it means the life and the birth of Jesus Christ. Right. It doesn't mean a celebration of Jesus Christ. It just means the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Right. Well, how do we know, Brother Bro? Well, the Bible gives us an example only in the New Testament, in two Gospels, in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 3, verse 23 through 38, and then Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17, it gives the genealogy of Christ. That's what nativity means. It means the life and the ministry and the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And how do we know that this nativity, that's what it means? And well, let's see what the Bible teaches concerning Christ coming through these generations in the son of David. And let's go to Matthew chapter 1, but we're not going to read all of this. But this is just going to show you where Jesus come from. And then in verse number 17, I just have my reader to read that. In Matthew chapter 1, in verse 17, what the Bible said? So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. So from all the generations from Abraham to David was how many? 14 generations. Go right ahead. From David unto the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. And I want you to think about this. Why is 14 significant? Well, when you think about it, it's 7 plus 7. 7 means a complete number. That's it. It's complete. That's it. God completed all 14 generations all right. through his son Jesus. 7 and 7 is 14. But you have to have 7 and 7, the number of completion, to have 14. Right. Seven is significant in the word of God. Right. Thank God for the completion. Thank God for those generations yes, whom Jesus come from. And yes, and we're moving right along here. And I'm getting down to the closing. Don't say amen. I'm getting down to the closing. And now when you look at the world today, and where did all of this come from? Where the world celebrate December 25th, where well, we have to recognize in 1822, uh, Clement Moore, he wrote a poem for children. Says, this was the night before Christmas. And that song had become popular. And then Santa Claus, it's a Dutch word that is relatively Santa Claus. In other words, St. Nicholas in English. And St. Nicholas, he may have been the early bishop of a church in Asia Minor meaning uh, the modern day Turkey. And we also recognize that where did these Christmas cards, where did they start from? Where did they come from? Well, the Christmas cards started in 1844 by an English artist named William Dobson. And William Dobson, he drew up some pictures in England and he used it uh, for the season. And when he used it for the season, and two years later in 1846, a uh, coal in Horsley, they saw the commercial potential for the cards. And see, so that just goes to show you how the world looks at a profit. The world looks at this holiday as a what? As a profit, yes, meaning to make money. Uh -huh. and, it, um, and it also it says here that, yes, they saw that it had commercial potential, and it grew in tradition, and it started the production, which is now over, listen to this, it's now worth over a billion dollars in industry every year during this season. Christmas cards. Over a billion dollars during this season. Can you just imagine how they have used Christ as a prophet? They have used Christmas as a prophet? That's what it's concerning. It's not concerning really about Christ but it's concerning all about the cash register. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As long as the cash registers is going, they're excited. They give a hoot about Jesus. As long as they can make a profit, that's what they're concerned about. But these men have come from the mindset, it's not about Jesus, but it's all about my profit. And we also, we recognize this. And some background here. In the first Christians, they feast on December 25th. It was in Rome. It was around about AD 336 AD. And after Christianity had 
uh, became the empire official religion. This day was chosen as a overriding the winter solace with a Christian celebration. The word solace, that means songs transformed into early version of what Christmas carols that we sing today. That's what solace is. These are Christmas songs that we sing today. And notice how we have artists now who have Christmas songs. Look at Mariah Carey. She has the number one Christmas song in the world. It's worldwide. It's known all over the world when that song come on. Don't look at me funny. Some of y'all may have Mariah Carey in your thing at home. You may listen to Mariah Carey Christmas song. Yeah, uh, listen. Yeah, you tell the preacher. Oh, no, preacher. I don't listen to that kind of stuff. So when you hop in your car, you're going to put in Mariah Carey. <laughs> but listen, these were solace to songs. And they was made up. And then also we recognized that, listen, after 800 AD, when Charlemagne, he was crowned emperor of the Holy Roman Empire on Christmas Day. And this was in the 17th century in England. The Puritan government had banned Christmas. They banned Christmas outright for 18 years, claiming it was what? Wasteful and it was a sinful festival. So in other words, you did have some Christians during that time that they recognized that Christmas, it was just about money. It wasn't spiritual during this time in the 17th century. They, they spoke out, said that it was wasteful, sinful festival, in which it was against what? Christian values. And that's just some of the background here. I just wanted to share with you. And we recognize that, listen, we're not trying to kill no one spirit concerning Christmas, but we also need to recognize that we celebrate Jesus every day. Yes, and we recognize that Jesus, and people have coined this phrase, Jesus is the reason. No, Jesus, he's the answer. And yeah, he not, he's the answer. Because if you're struggling with something, you're struggling with sin, he's your answer. He is the answer yes. to whatever you're going through. Yes, sir. Thank God yes, sir. for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this morning, and if you are standing in need of prayer, and you know that you've been going through, you may find yourself in a depressed state, saying, I, my kids don't have what they asked for, and, you know, I'm separated, I'm going through a divorce, or whatever the reason may be. But listen, you sit down and you talk to that child and you point to him Jesus. Yes, sir. And let him know why he's alive. It's because of Jesus. Because whatever it is up under that tree that that child uh, don't get and they had in mind, you let that child know. You be thankful. You be thankful. Whatever it is, you be thankful. Because I remember when I was a kid growing up, that uh, one Christmas, my daddy, I had told him I wanted those uh, Tonka trucks, you know. Brother, I may be telling my age, you know, Tonka trucks. You know, the Tonka trucks, brother, we were burning, the yellow Tonka trucks. Yeah. And I uh, had asked my father, you know, I wanted a Tonka truck for Christmas. And uh, I was excited. Christmas came around in early morning, and uh, one present that was left. And I'm excited. I'm thinking it was a Tonka truck. And I opened up the box. Disappointed. Wasn't a Tonka truck. Somebody. It was upset. My daddy said, Look, son, uh, you just need to be thankful for whatever it is. Play with it. And be thankful. <laughs> you know, you tell the kid just to be thankful at that age. I didn't understand that. Be thankful. <laughs> I'm disappointed because I didn't have a talking truck. <laughs> but then, as as I as I have gotten older, God has blessed me with some wisdom. And I understand now. I didn't under, I didn't understand back then, but I understand now that just be thankful, whatever it is. And so. Parents, I don't want you to get all upset. You know, your kids open up the gift or your grandkids, the great grandkids, and they open it up and it may not be the PS5. Yes, sir. A lot of kids right now, oh, PS5, PS5. Yes, sir. 
It may not be the PS4. Yeah. It may not be none of that. Yeah. Even if it's a even if it's a pair of socks. <laughs> Look at those socks and thank God for your feet. Yeah. <laughs> that you can put them socks on some feet. <laughs> if it's nothing but gloves. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Next you must believe, Mark 16, 15, and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes, he that believeth not shall be damned. Yes, sir. Then you must repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5. I tell you that unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Then you must confess by mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, sir. In Matthew 10, 32, Jesus says that whosoever confess me before men, he will also confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. Yes, sir. In verse 33, Jesus also says that whosoever deny me before men, right. he will also deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. Yes, sir. And then you must be baptized yes, into sir. the water of grave baptism. Yes, sir. In Acts 2, 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, into the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and yes, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. So that's God's plan of salvation as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We want to thank you.
I'm thankful for my son for getting married this summer to his high school sweetheart. I'm thankful for him for graduating from college recently. He's uh, he started his master's degree program coming up. And I'm also thankful that he is now the youth minister at his church. I'm also thankful for my brother-in-law coming in from out of town. This is a man I've known since 1985 from Lamar University. And his son Ian is with him today. But also, he got from Prairie View University. That's why he got the Prairie View mask on. I'm also thankful that my daughter is home from school at SFA. And more than anything, I'm thankful for being here at church today. Because every day I come, I become more enlightened and more spiritual and more faithful. Thank you. Good morning, church. I'd like to thank the church for praying for my mother when she had her heart procedure. Everything is well. She's still not feeling her best, so I still ask you to continue to pray for her. Thank you. Uh, good morning, church family. I wanted to thank the church for praying for my aunt who was diagnosed with the stage four lung cancer. Um, I come before you now to ask for prayers of strength for my family um, on the passing of my aunt. And I'm also asking for traveling grace as I go out of town to attend the funeral services. Thank you. Good morning, church family. I come asking your prayers. Um, if some of you have noticed, I've been limping a little bit. I, I had a cyst in the back of my leg, and so I'm going in Wednesday to have a procedure done to try to relieve the pressure. And I'm also kind of asking prayers for all three of them. Children, Nicholas, Nicole, and Nettie, they're all in positions where it makes them susceptible to be around uh, COVID. We just ask them uh, prayers to help keep them safe. Um, they're fairly good children, and I, I again, just want the Lord to keep them um, safe. And also, uh, I'm thanking the Lord for Danny, who also has finished his studies, and he'll be graduating this month and moving on with life as well. And, uh, and I also ask uh, for prayers for strength. This is my first holiday without my mother, and it's, it's, uh, it's been getting to me a little bit, and I'm uh, just asking that you sorry, help me up with that. Um, I've had a couple of anxiety attacks and things like that, so I'm just asking that you keep me. I also uh, would like to just thank Brother Rose for the sermon this morning. Amen. Amen. Very, very nice. Very and uh, I got to work on that cologne perfumes conversation there. We need to have that conversation again. Right? <laughs> no, but uh, I too would like to ask prayer for uh, for a gentleman by the name of his wife is Pamela. Pamela. His name was Carl Shelton. He uh, was my AC and refrigeration guy for about 25 years. And, uh, and he still was a fairly young man when he passed a couple of days ago. Um, and I'd say, well, I don't know, probably about 60, 55. But he uh, uh, passed a couple of days ago, and we worked together, like I said, for a number of years, at least 25 years. He's the only person I've had pretty much <clears throat> since I've been in business. Never with me every day. So uh, the other uh, person I'd like for you to keep in prayer is, uh, is uh, Darlene Erling, Erling, which is uh, Clint Johnson's wife. Clint Johnson passed uh, about five days ago. And Clint is Mary Ann, our late Mary Ann's sister here at the church this past couple years ago. That was her dad. And uh, so I knew I was very familiar with the, the family. Clint and I hunt together every year for the last 30 years. So, uh, so we uh, didn't put her up for the last three or four days. So, uh, there was someone you worked with for 30 years, 25 years, and then you know this other person for 25, 30 years. And uh, we just talked 
few weeks ago. So it's pretty rough. Uh, but anyway, if you would, just keep those two in your prayers for the, the family in your prayers. Let us pray together. Most righteous God, which I am in heaven. As again, Father, we are eternally grateful for this opportunity, Father, to come out to worship you with the spirit and truth and to get it right. And for that, we are thankful. We thank you, Father, for those who have come down and requested prayers. Father, we know that you already know what they stand in need of. And Father, we're asking that those who have come down requesting prayers for their loved ones that are in the hospital, their loved ones, Father, have passed on. For those who, Father, who are about to go in surgery and those who have come out of surgery. Mm -hmm. We ask, Father, that you would just continue to touch them, to finger your love. And we ask, them, Father, that you would give them the strength and give them the courage, Father, at this time that they need. Because, Father, we're all going through something. And we need each other, Father. And we ask, Father, that you would just continue to keep your love and arm around us and help us, Father, to show love for one another and be there for one another as you have commanded. We ask, Father, that you would just continue, continue, Father, to bless Cliffview on this hill. Yes, sir. Help us, Father, to be that light, Father, that you are asking us to be. To continue to care for one another. Continue, Father, to do your will. Yes, sir. And that is, Father, to reach out and try to save souls for you. Yes, sir. Just like the sermon, Father, is a great sermon. Your manservant done a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. Preaching sound doctrine. Yes, and Father, sometimes we take it for granted. But there are many souls, Father that are dying each and every day yes, and lost, Father, without you. And Father, that's our mission, that's our goal, Father, is to win souls for you. And Father, on that day, we might to give account of the things that we didn't say and the things that we've done. And Father, I ask that you would give us the wisdom and give us the knowledge to be about your Father's business while we're on this time side of life. Because, Father, we are here today and we're gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yeah. That you allow us, Father, to continue, Father, on this time side of life. And help us, Father, to be what you want us to be. Yes, yeah. And, Father, forgive us for our sins. Yeah. What are we worried about it be? Yeah. And, Father, we just ask that you will be with us. It's in Christ's name I pray tonight at all. Amen. 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 We come to another part of our service. Collection. It's where we give back a portion to God of what he's blessed us with. And I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, Now concerning collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye, upon the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by in store, as God has prospered him to fill me no gathering when I come. If you hadn't got a chance to give, you can still do so. You can drop it off in the foyer, or you can also you can give online on the church website. Let us give thanks. Father, once again, we thank you so much for the blessing that you give each and every one of us. We pray, Father, for the money that we receive today, that we can use it to upfill and edify your kingdom. Use it to help others, Father. We just thank you so much for the love that you show this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we pray our hearts and minds for communion, this is what we focus on the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I will read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. 
And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which I will also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, he took bread. And would have given thanks, he break it. And he say, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same night also, he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This to you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But another man examine himself. So let him that eat of that bread and drink of that cup, but he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us pray. Father, once again, we come before you and we thank you for the time that we have to reflect on all that you've done for us on Catholic's cross. And Father, as we protect this bread, we humbly take this bread, we bless it and we break it, and we eat it in remembrance of you. And also, Father, we share this cup in your name, remembering how you yourself took the cup with power and crucifixion. Help us, Father, to take this with love in our hearts. And in the word of mouth that pleases you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh, good and gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we were able to set aside and learn more and be more about your word, Father God. Help us to take that word and into our hearts and minds to, to really work on ourselves and also to take that word and that hope, uh, that faith and that spirit out into this world and make this truly a uh, season of Christmas more of Christ. Thank you so much for all your blessings. Uh, help us to remember and keep in mind all those who have asked for uh, prayer requests. Um, help us to just keep each other lifted up in the spirit and, and lifted up in prayer, Father God. These things we ask and we pray and we give thanks in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.